All right, welcome back to the Dental Domination Podcast. My name is Dan Bryan. I'm the co-founder of Dentalscapes. But as you all know, if you've listened before, I'm not here to talk about myself or my company. Today, it's all about Deborah Engelhart nash I'm so excited to welcome her to the show today. We're going to get into some really awesome topics that she knows a thing or two about, so watch out. Uh, we're going to be talking about team building and building the right workplace culture within a dental practice, something that I think a lot of practices can relate to in terms of some of the challenges associated with that, but also um, get really excited about in terms of the opportunities associated with that, not just for, you know, the warm and fuzzies uh, around the office, but also things that can truly affect your patient experience, your bottom line, uh, that sort of thing as well. So I am excited to get into it. But my friend Deborah, she is the founder of the Nash Institute for Dental Learning. She is a trainer, author, presenter, consultant, sought after speaker. And she also runs a really unique program that I want to get into a little bit later called the Dental Business School, an immersive two day executive training experience for dentist owners. Um, but as you can tell, she knows what she's talking about. I personally empathize with her because she's also married to a dentist. Yeah. Um, so we can we can commiserate on that. No, no, really. It's 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 awesome. And I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for my husband dentist. But anyhow, she's also located in Charlotte, which uh, puts her near to my hometown, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So I am so excited to have you here today, Deb. My husband went to dental school, by the way. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great school. Great school. So yeah, Deborah, thank you so much for dropping by. Before we get into team building and culture and uh, developing the right practice, what can you tell listeners about yourself, your journey, how you got into this? Obviously, it helps being married to a dentist, I would imagine. Oh, no, I wasn't married to a dentist when I got into this. In fact, okay. I tell people, if you had ever told me I was going to live east of the Mississippi, married to a Southern ball dentist, I would have told you not a million years. No, no, no. I, I, I started, what? Where are you from originally? California. Okay. So All right. California. And then um, I launched my own business, my own consulting. I moved to Seattle. Okay. So I lived in Seattle for 22 years and I used to be a pride consultant. Okay. And back way back in the day when Jim Pride was actually still alive. And I started my own company in 1985, my Amazing. own consulting company. Cool. So I've been around that long. And actually, my husband and I met at an ADA meeting. And okay. We dated for five years, Charlotte, Seattle. One of us had to make a move and it was me. So we were married in 1995. So I already had my business for 10 years before we met. And interestingly enough, um, he actually once we got together and I started consulting in his practice. I doubled his net the first year. And I okay. joked with him. I say, well, I had to double your net so you could afford me. I was going to say that ain't bad. Yeah, that works yeah. out. Well, that's good. Well, good deal. Um, so, you know, as far as what you- a brilliant dentist business. And, but like, as you know, most dentists, really exceptional clinical dentists did not go to dental school to be business people. They sure so, do. They're trying to do it all without business acumen and without HR insight, and they need resources to help them do that Absolutely. so they can be more successful. And so to that point, what has your consulting business then, I know, but what has, for our listeners, what is your consulting business focused on and, and what have you really developed that niche in? Well, I think I would say if you want to talk about my niche is typically team, team building and communication. But I also work with dentists on, and I don't want to say gaining the confidence, I suppose having the, the confidence and the communication skills to be able to present treatment, to get patients to say yes. Great. I do, you know, when I take a look at KPIs, um, you know, key performance indicators, not only do I look at growth, I also look at attrition. Um, I also look at um, their value per patient and, you know, Dan, you know, all these things cause you're in marketing. So, you know, I would say it's not really not, not necessarily that what's important is how many new patients you're acquiring. First of all, are you keeping them? So, yeah. you know, marketing is about what attracting and retaining, but also what kind of patient are you attracting? The right kind what of is people. their value? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely. and the reason that, so with doctors, I have a magic question. So help me remember to tell you, to help doctors understand there's a magic question to ask patients. In fact, I was just doing a podcast with Dr. Peter Bolden. And he said, if I wish I, if I had known that question years ago, I, I would make, had made more millions more dollars if I had known that question. 
But I think what's really important and why team is so critical, and your husband would to, would attest that the last person the patient ever meets is the dentist. And they've already started making decisions about whether or not they've chosen the right office for their care. And it has Absolutely. nothing to do with the tertiary anatomy of a crown. It has nothing to do with the clinical aspect of dentistry. It yeah. has a lot to do with the way they are made to feel from the moment, from the website, ta-da, and the social media information, Google reviews, all of that that leads them to the practice. But then what happens when they make the call? What happens on the telephone? It's the what team. happens with the, the human interaction of the team. So I always say that 80% of the reason why I choose treatment is based on the relationships that I develop. And the first relationships I develop are with the team. Absolutely. So that's why it's so critical for the team to have the culture and the attitude, then the training. Yeah. So that they're presenting the doctor really well. So, so you know, that you really just teed me up because I was I was going to ask you, although I think you you pretty well answered it, how team culture really impacts a dental practice's bottom line and, and the team's buy-in to the practice philosophy and value system and, and that sort of thing. But can you really can you quantify in any way uh, the difference between, you know, a team that's really kind of going through the motions or, or not? And one that's, you know, really stepping up to the plate and putting their best foot forward and being authentic with potential patients and patients alike. And can you quantify that or is that? I think, yes. You know, I think it's funny when, um, you know, you talk about whether, you know, whether they're being authentic. You know, I think when the, it's, it goes back to the old adage of mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Mm -hmm. If the team ain't happy, they don't really care if the patients are happy. If they're, if they're going to a job, and they don't feel acknowledged, they don't feel affirmed, they don't feel rewarded, Yeah. Um, then it's pretty hard for them to get really excited about going the extra mile. Yeah. So I always say to the doctor, um, we were just talking about this. I just said, doctor, if you, if you want me to be your cheerleader as your team member, you better give me something to cheer about. Yes. And if, and it if you want me to go to the extra mile, we need to go to the extra mile together. So I'm not a big fan of scripting team members. I think there's, I'm a big certain language and what you say is critical, but I don't want to give a team person and say, here, repeat after me. This is what I want you to say. I want, I want the patient yeah. to hear their heart. Yeah. I, uh, I've got a good friend, Jessica Martin, who's also in the space. And she always talks about the importance of frameworks versus scripts and allowing Allowing the dental team members the license to deviate from Absolutely. the quote unquote script uh, when appropriate, because you can't script everything you're going to hear on that phone conversation. You just can't. Um, and it doesn't come off, like you said, as authentic. So I think yeah, that's, and, that's super and, and you're not going to see, you know, people say, I wish my team member spoke like you. Well, then they wouldn't be them. Yeah, so right. you're not going to use language that I use. They're not going to. But once again, they're going to use framework and they're going to use, I mean, you frame the call. When we talk about the, the new patient phone call, frame it. So, so many times that I listen, uh, when I go into offices or if I listen to phone calls, you know, it's like, hi, my name is Deborah Nash. I'd like to make an appointment for a new patient exam, cleaning and x-rays. I can tell if a patient is, uh, if a team member is happy or not. If they're, if they're just going through the motions, yep. then the first question is going to be what? What yeah. insurance do you have? Yep. Or they're going to say, all new patients get a blah, blah, blah. And they're going to go through the list of yep. what new patients are going to get. If I really love what I'm going to do, I'm going to say a couple of things. I could be saying, let me be the first to welcome you to the practice. Yeah. So that I make sure that we schedule you appropriately. Would you allow me to ask you a few questions? Yeah. And, you know, isn't it funny? I totally agree with, uh, you know, that, that thought that you can, you can literally hear a smile through the other end of the phone. Uh, you can, and you can certainly also hear an eye roll. So yeah. both are both are super important. But let's get back to, you know, uh, you're first starting out. Say you're, you're beginning work with a practice in your consulting business. What are some of the symptoms that you see in practices when it comes to those that haven't quite gotten their teams to where they need to be or their workplace culture where it needs to be in order for folks to buy in? 
What a great question. I think one of the symptoms is, you know, when I go into a practice and um, usually I will ask the doctor before I even go in, doctor, on a scale of one to 10, where are you on your willingness to change? Ooh, yeah. That and if they home. don't, if, if they say, oh, I'm about a five, don't bring me in yet. You're not ready. So yeah. you got to be like a seven, really an eight before you're really, before you're going to receive the benefit. But I also think if I go into an office and I have team members who say that won't work, we've tried that before, our team, our patients are different, that, that, that can't happen here. So if they already, if I'm walking in with that negativity of unwillingness to learn, I was, in, in fact, when I, um, I use an example, if you, there's only two reasons why I don't learn something. I don't want to, or there's two reasons why I don't do something. I don't want to, or I don't know how. Yeah. If I don't know how, I can be trained. If I don't want to, no matter how many consultants, how many programs you take me to, I'm not going to learn. Yeah. So I think that willingness to learn, that eagerness to learn, I can tell when I walk in, you know, if they're saying, oh, we're so excited about, about how this is going to affect our practice, mm -hmm. whether that be emotionally or monetarily. Uh, I always think that team members should feel personal and professional satisfaction um, at work. And so I love it when everybody is, is, uh, read, is willing to embrace change and positive change. Well, Deborah, you just keep taking the questions out of my mouth or at least answering them before I can get them out. But I was, you know, I wanted to ask you, you talked about professional and personal satisfaction and growth within both of those areas. How can dentist owners build a practice culture that encourages both of those things simultaneously? Because there does seem to be, you know, some push and pull between those two as well. It's true. And, you know, it's interesting, because especially now in, in today's world, where we're talking about the difficulty in, in staffing, why, if I am, if I'm looking to pursue my career in your practice, why would I choose you over the doctor? Is it dollars? Is it because of dollars? Not necessarily. Yeah. There was a study done, interestingly enough, of Amazon has just recently required everybody to come back in to the building to work. And they're yeah. talking about how that has affected attitudes and culture. Because That's funny you say day, that because I, I, I may know where you're going with this. I just saw an article this morning that was you, talking about It's the same about article. How, yeah, and how it may be starting to backfire a little it bit. It may be a problem because what they lost was giving those employees autonomy. Yep. Um, so you, you and I read the same article this morning. So I think there's that, I think, treat me as a grown-up as mm -hmm. long as I act like a grown-up. So I would say if you're... If, um, so in my husband's practice, we always say, if you want to work here, there's three things you need to know. It's that simple. I mean, we have an HR manual done, you know, by professional and all that. But if there's, if you want to work here, there's three things to need, you need to know. Number one, we hire grownups. Yeah, the boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. We hire grownups. Yeah, um, no, I'm kidding. You yeah. know, you know where your cell phone should be. We shouldn't have to police you. We don't want to, want to babysit. Yep. So that's not why you're here. We're not babysitters. We're not going to micromanage. We don't have time to micromanage. We're terrible. In fact, we're terrible at that. Number two, keep your knees bent because there will be change. There could yeah. be change in today's schedule. There could be change in the treatment plan. There could be something that's happened. So don't become so fixed. I mean, I've had doctors who are ready to, the patient is, it's 1130. The lunch hour is at 12 and the patient says i'm ready to get started with this eight unit case and the patient and the team says we can't because it's our lunch hour it's like no keep your knees bent we'll make that yep. we'll figure that out yeah, the third yeah. thing is that we always say that um you'll we get you get what you give so if we expect you to behave as a grown-up and we expect you to keep your knees bent and we expect you to care about the success of the practice then we also need to care about your personal success. So we truly believe that if we ask you, um, I always tell them, I will never ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. Yeah. And if we ask you to give, then we have to be, we also have to give um, and, and, and vice versa. So Absolutely. I think it's that simple that it's, and I think that people are not only in today's world, they're not only looking for dollars, let's face it, you know, yeah, I'm looking for good income. 
Yeah. But I'm also looking at feeling fulfilled yeah. and I'm looking for autonomy. I'm also looking for, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a stake in the game. I'm a yeah. big fan of bonus plans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I, and actually I, now that you mentioned that I would love to have you back on the show to talk about bonus and incentive structure at some point, because I think, I think that is a real missed opportunity for a lot of practices out there. I think yeah. I'd love to dig I into also, that. I also think part of team building and part of keeping me inspired mm -hmm. is to make sure that you have training protocols for team. There is no such thing as a, first of all, there's no such thing as a turnkey employee. Right. So many times doctors will say, well, I want somebody with experience. Well, I have over 40 years of experience and I'm a really dang good person with pay, patient treatment coordinator, dental assistant. I can do a lot of things. You'd still have to train me. Yeah. To, to work in your practice. Yeah, so absolutely. I think so many times doctors sabotage their practices because they're not training their employees to advance their value. Yeah. I mean, learning is never over. I think that's the other piece. Yeah. And I think doctors always, I mean, if, you, if I use a, a restaurant analogy, doctors are always having to think about, no, doctors are having to hone their skills. They're having to take continuing education. They're learning new, new materials, new techniques, new technology. But I also think they have to pay attention to what are they doing about the front of the house? Yeah, absolutely. What are they doing about the front of the house? And, and patients' expectations are so much higher now because of social media. Mm-hmm. I can read what other offices are doing. I can see what other offices are doing on social yeah. media. And is your practice on par with what I, what I view? Yeah, absolutely. And there's so much transparency now with, you know, not only Google reviews, but, um, you know, other forums. It's just, you're absolutely right. It's transformed the game. What is the role of communication in all of this? Because we've talked about getting buy-in, you know, establishing like you at, at your husband's practice, you have those three core uh, requirements. What's the role of communication in really setting the tone for the practice and, uh, and getting that sense of buy-in? Because like you said, you know, people aren't necessarily just looking, well, in my experience, they aren't necessarily looking for just a paycheck. They want that fulfillment that you talked about and they want a sense of purpose. And it's hard to buy into a sense of purpose or have that shared vision and mission when it's not communicated clearly. So what's the, what's the role of communication in setting that tone? Well, you're talking between um, for, for the team and doctor and team and part of that. Absolutely. And I think once again, I think there needs to be um, clarity. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, there has set expectations. Mm -hmm. am, am I really clear on, on what you expect me, expect of me? Have we, have we checked each other? You know, are you giving me growth conferences? I think that's, that is oftentimes so missed that when was the last time the doctor sat down with the team and said, how well do you think things are going? Yep. Tell me what you think is going well. Tell me where I could help you. Tell me what could, what could be improved upon. Where are some areas of expertise that you have that we haven't tapped into? Yeah. So I think having the proper questions during a growth conference. Mm-hmm. I think one of an interesting question that I have some of my, my doctors ask their team members, if you were the CEO of this organization, what would you do? Mm. If, you were yeah. the, if you were the CEO, what would you do? Or I'll say, you know, if it, and I'll sometimes I'll, I, I actually, when I go into an office, I have a questionnaire that I ask the team to fill out. Mm -hmm. and, um, I will always ask the team, what are your ideas? Yeah. What are some of the things that you have observed? You've been here for a while. What are some of the things you've observed that you would like to modify or you would like to improve upon? Yeah. So yeah. I think that's and important. I mean, many times, many times, you know, the assistants, the hygienists, the front desk, they know better than the dentist. The dentist all, doesn't always recognize that. Uh, many do, to be fair. But it's the folks on the ground, so to speak, or in the trenches, so to speak, that are most familiar with the work that they're doing. And so... Uh, welcoming their perspectives and those those opinions and those ideas, I think, is so yeah. important. So that's really cool. And it's it goes back to what you were saying too about providing some measure of autonomy for yes. for the team. I think that's super important as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's important that um, you know. Um, in fact, when I go into an office, I will say to the team members, and I'll pull them aside individually, and I'll say, "You probably." have told the doctor some of the things that I'm going to tell the doctor. Yeah. But it takes, but it, sometimes it takes that objective third eye Yeah. for it to be a little bit, um, 
become a little bit more realistic and and yeah. or be more objective yeah. that you are very you are subjectively looking at it so let me take your subjectivity and my objectivity and let's create a plan yeah absolutely well and let's be honest <laughs> i mean so many times the dentist leaves the room and the patient turns to the assistant and says well what do you think well no, absolutely I mean, in fact, it's that's just, why I always think the patient, the, de the dental assistant should be in the room yeah. because I know exactly where the patient's eyes are going to go. They're going to look to the dental assistant. That's why the, I'm also very keen on where the, de where the assistant is standing when they're in the room because yeah, I want them to be behind the, the dentist. So when the patient's turning, they're looking at both of them, yeah. which is a physicality, a physical demonstration that. I'm verifying. This is a big absolutely. thing for me. I think last year my magic word was endorsement. I think it's absolutely critical for the team to endorse the doctor. Yeah. Most doctors are not going to walk into an operatory and say, damn, I'm good. You're so lucky to be here. Um, look at these hands. <laughs> they're not going to, they're not going to do that. But a dental assistant, a hygienist, a treatment coordinator, the person at the front desk can say, can I tell you a little bit about the doctor, the doctor for whom I work and why I really am glad you're here and, and the trust and integrity that I have learned from this person. Yeah. See, I become the second opinion, yep. but I have to believe it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have absolutely. To believe it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Deborah, this has been such a great conversation. I can't thank you enough for dropping by and sharing these these insights and i would i you know if if i have my way about it i'd love to gently drag you back onto the show at some point to talk about talk about incentive uh structure maybe and and some bonus opportunities that the dentists can implement because that's one we have not gotten into in this show and i i'd love to continue that conversation but before we close out what can you tell folks who may be interested in working with you about your programs what you offer I'm particularly interested in uh, this dental business school idea, this two-day program. What's that all about, or, or what what do you offer? Well, I, dental business school is once you said a two-day immersive program that I actually co-teach with Penny Reed, who's probably one of the smartest women on the planet. It's a strategies, and so we do it at our teaching facility in Huntersville, North Carolina, which is a suburb of Charlotte. And it's, it's a lot of times doctors will say, "Do I have to bring my whole team?" You know, sometimes doctors come, doctors and spouses come. Or team, certain you know, office managers come, certain team members come. So it doesn't have to be an entire team, whatever is the comfort level of the doctor. Yeah. And we basically, I say from, from phone call to recall, we take the practice through from the minute the patient calls through financial arrangements, scheduling. Uh, we talk about analytics. We talk about the numbers you should be paying attention to. And um, we do that uh, twice a year. That's so we have one coming up in October. We have another one coming up um, for after the first of the year. That's cool. Um, so that's a program. And, um, we actually do, my husband does the, the uh, postgraduate clinical training at the Institute. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So and when for, I go into offices and I'm not right for everybody. So I'm, I'm you got to be ready really to focused. change. I'm, uh, yeah, right? ready to change, gotta, but you got to be at a seven or eight on the change scale. You got to be a seven or eight. Yeah. Okay. And um, I'm really into fee for service and private practice dentistry. Mm-hmm. I help a lot of dentists um, become less insurance dependent. I'm not going to say independent, but I help practices do that if that's what they want to do, you know, yeah. if, that's, if that's what their goal is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So for folks who want to continue the conversation or rather have a conversation with you, uh, learn more about your services and what you all offer, where would you direct them to go? How can they get in touch with you? I appreciate that. Well, they certainly can go um, onto my website which is DebraEnglehartNash.com. It's E-N-G-E-L-H-A-R-D-T. Uh, they can call me on my cell phone and um, we can engage in conversation or text me and say, I'd like to have a conversation. And my cell phone is 74-904-3459 and text me and say, Mike, I'd like to have a, you know, I'd like, Debra, I'd like to have a conversation you with you. You are a brave soul. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I love that when yeah, folks do yeah. that. Yeah. I'll put all I this have never had anyone abuse notes. my time that way. And if they do, then I have to say, you know, we need to start, I need to put a meter on this, but yeah. it's rare. Fair enough. Well, I will um, definitely include all that information in the show notes so folks can access it there. Thank you so much, Debra. And thank you all for listening. I'm so uh, glad to have you here today. If you're at all interested in leaving a five-star review, I can't tell you how much I would appreciate it. Just go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to your shows. Leave that five-star review. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you didn't like for that matter. Um, I really appreciate it. I read every single comment and will definitely respond as well. Thank you so much, Deborah. I appreciate you dropping by. And like I said, I hope to be talking with you again in the near future. Great to see you. Awesome. Sounds good. Take care.
Bye. All right. I thought that was really good. What about you? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Fast. All right. Fast. Yeah, it does.